What's up, Internet? Blank here, and uh, we're going to talk about that Batman vs. Superman trailer. Alright, first thing, let's just get this out in the open. I like Superman, I like Batman, I like DC Comics, okay? Don't get me wrong, because I'm about to rip this trailer a new one, and this movie in general, a new one. But don't think I'm a Marvel fanboy, okay? I've collected comics since I was a young child, and I'm pretty old, okay? So, I like Superman, I like Batman, I like these characters. I mean, just to prove that, like, this is not just me hating for hating's sake. Okay. What, what, what's this? Actual bagged comic books look this is the actual return of Superman the actual death of Superman the another death of Superman Superman poster gallery Batman when Bane broke his back I mean, there is actually a black polybag uh, death of Superman issue in here somewhere. Um, I have it in a nice container so it doesn't get messed up. But anyway, yes, I am a legitimate comic book fan. So I have, I would say, the ability to, to, to judge whether or not these adaptions are bastardizations of these comic book characters that we all grew up and love. Well, not all of us, because a lot of people that these movies are now intended for have no idea what's been going on in the comics. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to shed a little light on that too, but uh, let's get into this trailer. Um, first thing we see is like the party and everyone's screaming and hollering and we get... Bruce Wayne driving up in an Aston Martin. I mean, are we going to... Like, this just shows this is all going to be tongue-in-cheek. And we're going to hit you over the head with stuff. Batman and Bruce Wayne, they use gadgets. So he's driving up in an Aston Martin like some kind of James Bond knockoff. Like, yes, we get it. He has gadget. We, You know, let's move along. Then we get Clark Kent not knowing who Bruce is. In a world in which some, you know, housewife in the middle of nowhere knows who the fucking Kardashians are, are we to believe in this universe that Clark Kent doesn't know who Bruce Wayne is? Doesn't know what Wayne tech is? I mean, are we... Is, is that what we're in for? That these characters are going to be portrayed as that dumb and oblivious to anything? And we, we, we get Bruce and Clark talking. We get this this back and forth like they already know that who they are. We, you know, Clark comes up to Bruce and wants to know about his opinion on the Batman. It's like he's at like the tone in which it is spoken and the way it's written, it all it comes across as if Clark already knows Bruce is Batman, and he wants Batman's opinion on himself. And then we get the same from Bruce when he goes, Well, the Daily Planet's a hypocrite for, you know, t judging what I do, because y'all kiss Superman's ass. Almost like he knows, I am talking to Superman, I am going to throw what Superman is in Superman's face. It is very just, like, tongue-in-cheek, like, Oh... Let's, let's appease people like, look, it's Batman and Superman and they're having witty, uh, snippy banter with one another. That is not good writing. You have to, like, establish that either these characters are completely dumb 
completely oblivious, or establish the fact that they, they're they not. And what you've done is you've established in this trailer that in this world, Batman's a moron, Clark's a moron. And then we're introduced to Lex Luthor. Okay, I'm sorry, he's not Lex Luthor. He's Jesse Eisenberg playing a Jesse Eisenberg version of Lex Luthor. Or Jesse Eisenberg playing every character that he's ever played in every movie named Lex Luthor. Because he came across as if, I know that's Batman. I know that's Superman. Look at me, it's, I've brought together Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. Uh, again, tongue in cheek, let's just throw it at the audience. This is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. We're giving it to you. No. No, no, this is not what I wanted. This is not what, you know, eight-year-old blank sitting at home reading comic books wanted. This is not what 12-year-old blank sitting in middle school reading comic books wanted. This is not what 15-year-old blank in high school coloring his Superman coloring book wanted. Okay? This is crap. We also get in this little banter between Clark and Bruce that, you know, Clark says most of the world sees Superman as a hero. Well, if that's the case, then why are they having congressional hearings on him? Like, he's either a hero or he's not. He's either accepted by the people or he's not. You know, you can't have this like, well, everyone outside of America sees him as a hero, but, you know, Americans, uh... And that kind of goes to the fact that the backstory on this character. Warner Brothers has done so much in recent years to try and separate what Superman is today to what he used to be when he was created. And that has a lot to do with actual the way Warner Brothers treats its creators. Because the whole reason the new 52 came about, the whole reason Man of Steel was so much different than the character is because Warner Brothers almost lost the rights to Superman completely. And if it wasn't for the Supreme Court saying we're not going to hear this case, whatever, it's not important enough to us, which I think is complete and utter bull, because it deals with a person's rights to what they create. Warner Brothers has made billions upon billions of dollars off of the work of Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. And yes, their families and their, their estates get royalties, but are they getting what they, their fair share of it? I don't think so. When you have two people who basically have bankrolled your, you know, comic book company, that character of Superman has bankrolled. Now granted, Warner Brothers didn't want anything to do with these comic book characters at all at one point. Yeah, that's right. Back in the 80s, maybe early 90s, they wanted to sell DC off to Marvel. Yet yeah, that almost happened. We almost had a world in which the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe existed in one. Because Warner Brothers didn't know what to do with their comic book division. And ever since the, 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 the estates of Schuster and Siegel started taking them to court, they said, you know what, we have to change Superman, otherwise we're going to lose him and he can go show up anywhere. And that is why the New 52 happened. That is why everybody in the DC Comics changed. That is why Superman fundamentally changed so that he would be different enough from what Schuster and Siegel created that they would still have a version that they could use. All right, throughout this trailer, we are tortured with Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor talking and speaking and being Jesse Eisenberg. It's distracting. I don't know how you're going to be able to sit in this movie and take that villain seriously. Everybody wants to knock the old Superman movies and Superman Returns for their portrayal of Lex Luthor as always having a real estate scheme. Well, it seems to me that what Zack Snyder has tried to do is take the grand mastermind that is Lex from the comics, translated perfectly to the animated universe, and tried to make him young and hip so people, the millennials will, will you know, connect with him. But it doesn't work. 
Nothing about this portrayal of Lex Luthor screams intellectual. Nothing about this screams, you know, that he is any part equal to Bruce Wayne. And that's what Lex is. A lot of people may not know this, that when Superman was originally created by Schuster and Siegel, Superman was the bad guy, and Lex essentially was the good guy. It had everything to do with the man and the Superman. And the Superman was the villain, and Lex, as the man, was the hero. And when it was turned into the comic book form, Superman became the hero, and Lex, the villain, because Superman was this alien... And he was this almost God among walking among men who just wanted to be human. He just wanted to be a normal person. And Lex was that normal human. And he was the personification of being a human. He was super intelligent, super athletic. He was almost human perfection. But then he had this alien come in who everyone saw as perfection. This beacon of truth, justice, and the American way. That's right, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say truth, justice, and the American way. Not what Warner Brothers wanted to do with DC Comics in the last couple of years where he renounced his American citizenship and he didn't want to be American anymore. Because, you know, we have to sell comics and the only, we're not selling them to the mainstream, so let's go fucking kiss ass to the left who hate everything. But... Jesse Eisenberg does not portray the human, like, the peak of human perfection. He, he may have the intelligence and the, the, the quirky, like, they're, they're playing to, like, the, the, the stereotype of the awkward nerd. I find that offensive. I mean, uh, I was ridiculed and beat up for being an awkward nerd. You know, why now do we get to portray this as, you know, oh, that's the cool hip thing. No. Stop playing. You, you, you want to complain about stereotypes, stop playing into the stereotypes. Let this character be what he is. He is supposed to be a villain who is charismatic, super intelligent, super, like, peak physical human perfection. That is not Jesse Eisenberg. And getting into characters not being what they are, Bruce Wayne is supposed to be one of the most intelligent people in the DC Universe. He is supposed to have tabs on everything. But all this trailer showed us is like a angry, moody, conservative stereotype. I mean, it's almost as if they ripped, you know, his personality straight out of a Republican campaign commercial. He brought the war to us. He's an alien. Really? Is that what we're... Is that what... Ben Affleck's version of Batman's gonna be like the angry Republican who doesn't trust anything that's not what he knows I mean are we gonna get that political with these movies that we're just gonna turn stereotypes into like turn these iconic characters into stereotypes and hope to god it gets picked up like people buy into like I'm sorry I don't want to see that I want to see Bruce Wayne the kid who lost his parents and through that one bad day, decided, you know what? Nobody else is going to have bad days. And that's basically what Bruce did. He decided, no one else is going to have bad days. I am going to do something about it. I'm a man. I can die. I'm mortal. But I am going to go out there and I'm going to help people. And that's what Bruce Wayne is. That is what Batman is. He has trained himself to be the best in this version that we have seen so far in this trailer for this movie is not that. Okay, the fact that in this trailer Clark tells Bruce, if I wanted you dead, you'd already be dead. You see, this goes back to the, man, to, to the first movie, Man of Steel, in which they horribly wrote it to make it more modern and edgy. So now it makes no sense for him to say that. Because in the first movie, his father said, well, you know, when you, you just gotta let people die, you gotta let people die. And his mother tells him, uh, was it this, the earlier trailer for this movie or whatever, that, you know, you don't owe anybody anything. So why now all of a sudden is Clark, I'm not gonna kill anybody. I'm not gonna hurt anybody. I'm just, no. It's bad writing. You can't have a complete change in character without 
any reason. You know, if you actually follow the source material, which is laid out for you, 75 years, 75 plus years of sort, three quarters of a century of material, and Hollywood just ignores it. It's like I said in my review for The Dark Knight Rises. You're going to try and jam all this crap into a movie because you have no respect for the source material. Zack Snyder thinks he's better than the people who created it. I mean, Watchmen, while a good movie, still sat there and changed things around enough to where it was like, you lost the point of the source material. The reason Watchmen is so great is because of what it is actually about. You don't get that in the movie at all. And you don't get anything of the source material in this trailer in the first Man of Steel other than Superman. Uh, he's a character, he's got a big S on his chest, and he flies, and he's super strong, and he shoots lasers out of his face. That's what you get. The, 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 the deeper meaning of the source material, not there at all. And then we cut to Doomsday. Another, let's just go off to the source material, because Hollywood can't figure out how to use Superman in a movie. They can't. So what do they do? Let's say, well, we can't do a Superman movie because nothing's at stake. So there's got to be something at stake. So the only way we can do that is we can have him fight Batman because, well, Batman, the Batman movies make us money and Man of Steel didn't make us enough money. So we got to put Batman in the Superman sequel so it'll make money. But then we have to have something for Superman to fight where he's actually at risk of being hurt, Doomsday. And it's not even Doomsday, it's got something to do with Zod. So we've completely set off to the source material once again. Like, Doomsday was a character created for the comics for the sole intent and purpose of them being able to kill off Superman. So it was a money grab even by DC Comics at the time. But eventually Doomsday's backstory got fleshed out and you realize why he fought Superman. Why? The fact that he is a Kryptonian and that he was genetically engineered to always evolve to overcome any obstacle and blah, 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 blah. He had a backstory. Damn it. And now you're just going to make up a Zod mutation clone thing. Really, Hollywood? And again, the final bit of this trailer, they just... People are like, oh, he's so awesome! The introduction of Wonder Woman. Now, another F you to the source material on Doomsday. Doomsday can kill everybody. Wonder Woman wouldn't stand a chance. Batman wouldn't stand a chance. The only person that were on Earth that was going to defeat Doomsday was Superman. A full-on, no-hold-back fight with Superman. That is the only way that Doomsday was going to be defeated. Now, you've got Wonder Woman. And like, I mean, this isn't even Doomsday. It's it's a Zod thing that looks like a really bad version of Doomsday. Because Doomsday didn't shoot freaking heat vision out of his mouth and his, li his eyes. So, I mean, I'm sure Wonder Woman will be able to hold her own against, you know, this version. Batman will be able to do whatever, because I'm assuming that's when he went and f swung out from the, 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 the heat vision. It was coming from Doomsday, not Superman. Because in his fight with Superman, you know, he was wearing the Dark Knight freaking Returns or whatever Frank Miller comic book that was armor. So, again, we were getting, like, a big screw you to, the, to, to, you know, the source material because Hollywood thinks the source material's dumb, yet Marvel kind of walks that line of kind of sticking to the source material, you know, and, and as much as humanly possible, and their movies make a shit ton more money, DC. You ever think if maybe you actually made a comic book movie that was a comic book movie, you'd make money? You know, your characters have been around for 75 plus years. 
on the merit of that material. Nobody's going to remember these movies in a decade. Because you'll have rebooted them twice by then. And the fact that when Wonder Woman shows up, no one knows who she is. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Wonder Woman's solo movies are going to be a part period piece. So she has been around in the past. Like World War One, I, I think, is when part of it takes place. So... How does no one know who the, who she is? Has she did she fight in World One and just disappear? Did she pull a Nolan and a Nolan Batman like I'm 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 going I'm gonna go away for a while? Folks, my point is demand better in your movies. Don't go see this. If you want shitty movies to stop being made, don't go see them. If you're in the middle of a movie and it's shitty. Walk out. Demand a refund. Pay for your concessions. They, you know that The people that work at the theaters, that's how they make their money. So pay for your Coke and your popcorn and don't be a dick and ask for money back on that. But that ticket price, that goes to the, that goes to the movie. That, that goes to the, the, the production company. That goes to the people that made that movie. If a movie sucks, don't pay to see it. I never even pay... I, I didn't pay to see Man of Steel. I saw a, a preview. I wouldn't have paid to see that movie. I didn't pay to see Transformers movies either. Saw the you know the early show for a review. Crap movie. Did not give it my money. Like video games, like television, like anything in a capitalist society, free market society. And this is why free markets work. If you don't like something, don't buy it. Don't whine and complain and make a big stink after you've spent your money. Just don't go see it to begin with. And if, when we as a people put our foot down and be like, no, you know, just not, no. They'll stop giving us crap. And I can understand some people's excitement about this because they're, they're, they're seeing it through fan eyes. But so am I. I'm seeing it through fan eyes, and guess what? My fans let down. If I had a little fan next to me, he'd be like all sad and shit. You know, he'd be, he'd be very upset. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's been my opinion. You know me. I'm very opinionated. Leave a comment. I'm sure there'll be hate. If you like what you see, and you want to see more, click like, subscribe, check out the Media Clash podcast over on Cell Fox. Until next time.